May God bless your Sunday worship. This is a remote worship service on behalf of St. Peter's Lutheran Church for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost, September 3rd, 2023. We gather in this place to receive the blessings God has promised and to thank and praise Him for those blessings. We sing the hymn of invocation, number 713, From God Can Nothing Move Me. We sing stanzas 1, 4, and 7. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Introit Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light, 
and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil desires. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lectionary The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah chapter 15. O Lord, you know me. Remember me and visit me, and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. 
for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I do not sit in the company of revelers, I do not rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to be this people's fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gradual Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Epistle reading, and the basis of our meditation for today, is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by doing so you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together the verse of the day in preparation for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia! Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, 
let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day, 525, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We sing stanzas 1, 2, 4, and 5.
The Message A Good Kind of Head Cold Romans 12, 9 through 21 Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is our text. I know some people to heap hot coals on. I've got folks that I'd like to light on fire. I'll bet you do too. That meanie, that menace, bury him. Bury her in blazing embers. Those bullies and brutes and backstabbing betrayers. Drop blistering anvils and grand pianos on top to feed the flames. The antagonists, the abusers, the culprits, the perpetrators. Riddle them with pinpricks and paper cuts. Shower them with salt and citrus until it sizzles. But do they qualify as genuine enemies? Do they fit the definition of a bona fide foe? Let's remember Paul speaking of people. The Apostle talks about individuals. In our epistle reading, he's not got in mind inanimate predicaments or intangible tribulations, but particular figures. And he's not just alluding to anybody who happens to differ from you in neighborhood or background or behavior. His snapshot of the enemy's inviting vengeance does not depict simple unpleasant or even obnoxious somebodies. The contours of one to smother with bread doesn't silhouette essentially anyone who irritates or annoys you. The profile of the ones to suffocate with water doesn't encapsulate basically anyone who interrupts or complicates your day. The nemesis shoes don't suit just anyone who questions or contradicts you. The enemy uniform does not belong to just anyone who competes with you for resources or rewards. Neither he nor we can pin the villain's tail on every childhood heckling hellion, romantic rival, workplace counterpart, or political opponent we come across. So the Apostle Paul doesn't single out any from the lineup of usual suspects. He doesn't point to a rogue from the regular gallery, like the emperors or the centurions or the tax collectors. He doesn't spotlight the chief priests or the Pharisees. He doesn't target the Egyptian polytheists or the Gentile pagans. All these he names as neighbors, not enemies. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. He recalls Jesus saying, Pray for those who persecute you. He echoes Jesus saying, Do good to those who hate you. In many cases they occupy one's own community and family. An enemy, on the other hand, desires your destruction. An enemy inflicts the misfortune and savors your suffering. No, St. Paul's word of the Lord advises armoring up against another. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He goes on, For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ah, uh, yes, the ancient serpentine adversary. But should we share a table with Satan? Should we be serving him supper? Is scripture really instructing us to have a drink with the demons? Ought we live in peaceable harmony with the prince of darkness? Certainly not, when the epistles, the gospels themselves, the entire Bible demands we resist and run the other direction as fast and as far as we can. 
Paul knows a nearer enemy. He warns of an even more sinister one. This enemy looms in the mirror and intrudes upon your own mind. You once were alien and enemy, doing the bad work of the evil one. We were powerless enemies of God. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want. Indeed, that which I hate, but which dwells in my flesh. This is what I keep on doing. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? You see, the real enemy resides inside. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? Take up the cross, deny yourself, hate your own life, and lose it. In Romans, Paul uses the Greek word anthracus for burning coals. From this, of course, we derive the English term anthrax. It designates an infection brought about by a Bacillus anthracus bacterium. The typical symptoms presents as a section of severely injured tissue with a vividly inflamed crimson skin surrounding the blackened lesion. It also enacts the same effect, invisibly and internally, on lungs and intestines. The germ feeds on hemoglobin proteins in the blood. It can prove both contagious and fatal among animals and humans, as well as between the two. The pathogenic particles may remain dormant in the environment for extended periods, years even only to reactivate under conducive conditions. That is why armies illegally employ anthrax as one of the most common biological weapons. It is a pretty startling image of the effects of sin in our lives and in our world, isn't it? The coals we would eagerly heat smolder already in us. Our sinfulness kindles and fuels the animosity we can't wait to heap on our enemy's head. The ignited tongues that lick sparks at neighbors, the inflamed fingers that flick flares at everyone around, they eject forth from the spontaneous combustion of our touching ourselves. We loathe others because we loathe ourselves. Sinful selfishness singes, scorches, heaps coals upon our conscience and core. Our anxiety, our arrogance, our embarrassment, our outrage, it scalds us body, mind, and spirit. We see one another with the seared eyes of an enemy. We treat one another with the charred hearts of an enemy. We make enemies out of anybody who has anything we want, and all who even appear to stand, however accidentally, in the way of our taking it. We hurt worse and burn to a deeper degree than literally physical infernos. Things that we have said, things that we fail to say, we breathe fire. Stuff we have done, stuff we neglect to do, we do the flame throwing. We set ourselves as enemy, enemy even of the law of God itself. I am the criminal, I am the animal. I am the enemy, and enemies deserve vengeance. But God the Lord has coals of his own. The Lord God has coals for cleansing instead of for consuming. God put in the Apostles Paul mind a holy fire for healing and relief rather than cremation. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sins atoned for. The fire Paul stokes glows with a sacrifice from the day of atonement. The hearth God tends radiates the burning offering on the altar 
and the cloud of sweet incense covering the mercy seat. He's thinking of the fire that the high priest Aaron used to atone for the Israelites. He's thinking of the fire that Isaiah felt purify him from all sin. He's thinking of the fire that Peter beheld and warmed himself with the night before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He's thinking of the charcoal fire roasting fish that melted the guilt and grief of his deserting disciples at the Risen Again One's post-Easter breakfast. He's speaking of the fire that annihilates the evidence and puts the past behind. He's speaking of the fire that cauterizes the pestilence and rot. He's speaking of the fire that sanitizes the contaminants and toxins. He's fanning the fire that fell on Pentecost and exhaled tongues and fingers of flame onto the heads and into the hearts like an engine powering courage and compassion for proclaiming the good news and putting it into practice. Jesus sweat blood in the sweltering hellfire of forsakenness to forgive you. He walked the feverish distance from heaven to humankind upon the coals of our iniquities set alight. He thirsted beside you in the smelting furnace of abandonment we deserve, but mercifully and miraculously avoid. On our behalf, he eagerly ate the fuming wrath and swallowed the simmering punishment. Then he returned to the dirty earth from whence we emerged, ashes to ashes and dust to dust, and he quenched the curse once and for all. Now, out of the cinders, like a phoenix, he has ascended with forgiveness, salvation, and everlasting life in his wings. Jesus has become the burning coals that render the infection dead, drawing out the poison instead of drowning the person. Jesus keeps warm. Jesus makes safe. Jesus the crucified provides the feast. Jesus the risen takes care of his people, lights the way, holds us close, and shares his joy. He has emblazoned his shadow over us, our whole selves, our entire lives, identity, history, and destiny. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, forgiveness with a vengeance, gentle and relentless. Most importantly, he says still, you are mine, and I know how to preserve what belongs to me. Receive and rejoice, for you have died with Christ. Believe and be glad, because you are rising with Christ. Repent and release, since you will live and reign with Christ. Help yourself to those cozy coals. Help yourself to a declarative word of him, forgiving your sins. Help yourself to the promised words of everlasting resurrection. Help yourself to the assurance in scripture and in sermon and songs that he delights to grace you, to favor you, to come near you, to go with you. Help yourself to the sterilizing coals that crown and halo your head, you baptized and beloved child belonging to God. Help yourself to the atoning coals that lie upon your lips, you member of the Holy Communion, the honored guest of the Lamb's wedding banquet. You have genuine love in his name. You have brotherly affection at his house. You have an exceeding honor in his service. You have a zealous trust and a fervent spirit with his people. Feel it strong enough not only to hold, but to weld. If it works on you, it also works through you. No more need you loathe others or elude them as if enemies. No more must you compare, compete, avenge with anvils or hurt, burn, and bury. You may give them the best kind of head coals. You may notice and listen. You may assist and embrace 
and accompany neighbors until they become brothers and sisters. You get to turn the other cheek. You get to go the extra mile. You get to keep one safe. You get to make another warm. You get to cook feast for the meanies and menaces. You get to take care of the bullies and hold the brutes close. You may sorrow beside them, unpleasant and obnoxious, irritating and annoying though they be. You may celebrate together, interrupting, complicating, contradicting, questioning as they are. Hellions, villains, rivals. Look how God's made it easy to identify who needs coals of kindness. Counterparts and opponents. Look how he's marked where you may witness and even participate in overcoming our evils with his good. I know some people I'd like to heap those hot coals on. I bet you do too, don't you? Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto eternal life. Amen. We sing the offertory on page 159. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Prayer of the Church let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Avenger, teach your faithful ones to trust so fully in your fatherly care that they seek not vengeance but mercy. Stoke our zeal to bless those who curse us and so heap hot coals upon their heads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have made us feast on your word to the delight of our hearts. Keep us from the world company of revelers who despise your word and inspire the pastors of your church to brazenly proclaim what is precious, the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Open wide the hearts of Christians to one another, especially within the home and between neighbors. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patience constant. Let us commend ourselves in everything as those known by God's love, and therefore unashamed to serve one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation, its leaders, and those who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. Grant peace in our time, O Lord, for you alone fight for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Physician, heal and restore. We especially remember Brandon, Betty, Vereen, Rick, Judy, Casey, Stephan, and Pam and those who we name in our hearts before you now. For the long-term homebound and those in nursing homes, especially Rick, give them your holy care and strength to bear their crosses 
that they may endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving be to you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for all the mercy and faithfulness you have shown to this congregation. Your word has not returned to you void, but you have here gathered a people that know you and fear your name. Give us your Holy Spirit, that we may at all times see the good things in this congregation and praise and thank you for them. Bless your word in times to come, that it may preserve the faithful in your grace, convert those who do not yet belong to you, and bring back the erring and straying. You lead us in the ways we should go. Gather your people as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and shelter your congregation with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rise up, O Lord, and avenge those who are persecuted for the name of your Son, Jesus. In the communion of all your saints, grant us endurance to bear our crosses as Jesus bore his for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all things for which the Lord would have us ask, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn, number 816, Christ Be My Leader.
we sing the long meter doxology number 805. Creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy 